Funding for Shape Realist is provided by Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hey guys, so originally I wrote a long ass opening paragraph about the state of the MCU post Endgame, and how while my positive opinions on phases 1 through 3 of this series haven't really changed, I cannot bring myself to care about phase 4. But then I realized that all of that would be better suited for its own video, so expect a dark reprise of my we've been taking the MCU for granted video in the next few months. And again, I don't like hating the MCU just for the sake of it, like a lot of people seem to do. I'm not just following the general consensus of film Twitter or some shit like that. I am just genuinely so burnt out by the number of mediocre products Disney has been shitting out from the MCU. In addition to Star Wars, their animation branches, etc. But out of all the Disney content being shoveled down my throat that I've had to review this year, this has been the piece of content that I've dreaded reviewing the most. I put off starting this review for a full day after having seen the movie, because I just didn't have it in me to express this opinion. But here goes. I did not like Thor Love and Thunder, and by saying so, I feel as if I have officially admitted defeat. This was going to be the make or break film for me, the one that decided the future of this franchise and whether or not it could be salvaged going forward. Because I love Taika Waititi's work so much. Jojo Rabbit was my favorite film of 2019, What We Do in the Shadows is a banger, and Thor Ragnarok was such a refreshingly original take on the character and the MCU as a whole. To the point where I was so excited to hear that Taika wasn't going to stop there with Thor. This was easily my most anticipated MCU film of Phase 4, because how could Taika possibly screw this up two hours later? Oh, Here are the good things in the movie. Christian Bale is very good and intimidating and fun as gore, and I wish he was in a different movie. One that actually used its villain more. I like the black and white scene where he tortured Thor and his friends, and the fight scene after was good too. I like the part where Russell Crowe was Zeus. He, he was funny. Stormbreaker being jealous of the hammer was cute. The different fonts they used during the end credits were pretty cool, and honestly the best and most visually interesting part of the movie. I liked the montage where Thor and Jane were in like a rom-com together. It was funny, and it actually sufficiently filled in the blank of Jane's sudden absence from the MCU. It's kinda nice to actually get closure on this character that was supposed to be such a big part of Thor's life, but then just disappeared because Natalie didn't want to do these movies anymore. I mean, I can't blame her, those first Thor movies weren't great. In fact, I'd still call this my second favorite Thor movie by default, but that's not too much of a compliment. I think my biggest issue with this movie has to be its tone. Like, it still has the same goofy, silly, jokey feel as Ragnarok, even though it absolutely doesn't fit this story at all. Ragnarok was a Thor and Hulk buddy movie on a goofy alien planet with Jeff Goldblum. It was a perfectly fine premise and setting to not take anything too seriously. Did it undercut the supposed to be dramatic Hela stuff a bit? Yeah, I guess, but I think Taika reined it in enough with those scenes to make it an overall pretty tonally effective movie. It's very silly, sure, but I still felt the weight of Hela's malice and the destruction of Asgard. In this movie, you just don't feel the weight of anything. There's so many jokes that nothing matters or feels all that impactful, even though it really should. The premise of this story isn't as silly as Ragnarok's was. In this one, Gore abducts a bunch of children and plans to murder every god, and also Jane is dying from cancer? Why exactly does this have the same goofy, lighthearted tone as Ragnarok? Every single scene has to have some sort of silly shit or unfunny quip. Cause we can't make you feel too sad, you have to enjoy the movie, so here's some more funny! I know a lot of people lodge this exact complaint at almost every MCU film, but personally, I've never really seen it as a major problem that takes me out of the story, until this film came along. I think the reason the scene where Gore is torturing everyone is so good is because he muzzles all of them so they can't quip at him, which Thor tries to do before the muzzle comes on. So thank you Gore for that one good dramatic scene. Now back to the bad shit. The fact that Gore hardly ever appears in the movie and only kills one god on screen really does such a cool character concept and fantastic performance such a disservice. Bale is trying so hard, but you just never feel threatened by him because nothing in this movie feels like it has any stakes. One of the heroes seems to get brutally killed, and then my eyes perked up for the first time watching this. Like, oh no, I don't want them to be dead! 
But then it turned out they weren't dead, and I was like, okay, well, now I kind of wish they died, because then there would at least have been a dramatic sacrifice or something. It made it so I didn't care when another character actually died. Like, oh well, they're probably fine. And then they kind of were fine in the post credit scene. I like that nothing means anything anymore. I like that his hammer breaking in Ragnarok meant nothing. And this isn't the fault of this movie, but I like that Loki dying and Thor losing his eye also meant nothing. It's a very cool way of storytelling. Anywho, the jokes may ruin the tone, but at least they're good jokes, right? Shockingly, no. I got a few chuckles here and there, and I liked the rom-com montage a lot, like I said. But overall, this really wasn't that funny. It felt like someone was trying to emulate Taika's style of humor, yet not quite hitting the same marks. Which is so weird, because he co-wrote this movie in addition to directing it. There are so many bits in this that just don't work at all. The most annoying of which were Screaming Goats. Remember how funny Screaming Goats were 15 years ago? Well, good news! The goats do the funny screaming thing 15 times in this! Good lord, make it stop! <coughs> most of the characters in this were kind of worthless, like Korg and Valkyrie really didn't add anything, and Jane just felt so off compared to how she acted in the previous Thor movies. I guess becoming the mighty Thor turns you into an unfunny quip machine, why does that not surprise me? If you're excited to see the Guardians of the Galaxy again, don't be. They all get one line each, except for Rocket who gets like three, and Star-Lord who has like one whole conversation with Thor and nothing else. That's so bizarre because here we have a character whose mom died from cancer. You'd think he should have come back later and maybe had a heart to heart with Jane about her cancer diagnosis, but nope. The Guardians all get yeeted out of the movie as soon as possible since Taika needed to undo the place Thor ended up in Endgame in order to reset to his comfortable status quo. Obviously, the Guardians shouldn't have been in the majority of this movie since they have their own series, but they could have shown back up in the climax, or at least the epilogue. Once they're gone, the movie pretends they don't exist, which is so annoying. What was the point of Thor joining them at the end of Endgame? Does anything have a point anymore? It also feels like part of the movie is missing. Like, it clocks in at under two hours, which normally I wouldn't complain about, I do like me a short movie. But after the fight scene with Gore and what would usually be the middle of the movie, we're already gearing up for the climax. It feels like nothing happens, there's barely any journey or anything. Were there more scenes where Gore actually got to do anything that got cut? Taika, can you explain yourself? Oh, also, apparently this movie is hella gay. I mean, Korg finds a boyfriend at the end who has no lines or character, just like the character they invented for Shiro to marry in Voltron, so cool, great work there! Also, he has two dads, even though he mentions having a mom in Ragnarok. Okay. Valkyrie gets to kiss a woman's hand and talk about her dead girlfriends, and that's the extent of her gayness. So yeah, I guess by Disney standards, this is indeed hella gay. Except Owl House exists, so no it is not actually. The sort of representation this movie actually offers is perfectly fine, but stop hyping it up like it's the most groundbreaking revolutionary representation ever. F*** you. So yeah, overall this did not work for me, and I'm genuinely very disappointed about that. This doesn't feel like it came from the same Taika who made Jojo Rabbit, a movie that knew exactly when to rein in its goofiness and let its serious scenes really soar as a result. Nor does this feel like it came from the same Taika who made Rag Ragnarok, a movie that was actually funny, with a story that complemented the silly jokes pretty well. Obviously he needed to severely turn the comedy down to make the tone more appropriate for this story. But again, these just don't feel like the kind of mistakes Taika would make, unless he was operating under a severe time crunch to meet a looming Disney deadline. This movie is ultimately just another indication of the slump that the MCU can't really climb out of, as long as Disney needs to shove endless amount of content out the door for its streaming service and its monopolistic hold on movie theaters. So, I'm sorry to say, but I can't really bring myself to get excited for this franchise anymore. Taika was one of the biggest auteurs who brought a radically different style and tone to the MCU during the Infinity Saga. So if he can't replicate similar magic here in Phase 4, do I really have high hopes that James Gunn will be able to make Guardians 3 good? The answer, against my best wishes, is 
no, not really. Anyway, yeah, Love is Thor gets a 5 out of 10. And yes, I'm as tired of my negativity in these last three reviews as you likely are. I really need a break from this shitty slew of Disney products. So the next two videos this month are longer, funner, way more positive passion projects of mine. And then maybe in a month or two I'll rant about Phase 4 some more or something, I don't know, whatever. Good night, new Asgard. Through the Shadow Realm. Now it's time to talk about Squarespace, the amazing website builder that Korg probably used to build a rock person dating profile and find his rock person BF on. I mean, hey, the movie doesn't explain where this guy comes from, so this is as logical of an explanation as any. So yeah, let's discuss Squarespace now. Squarespace is a fantastic, intuitive, online website builder that allows you to create beautiful websites for your business or personal hobby. Present your work using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Display projects in customizable galleries and add password-protected pages to share private works with clients. You can even present your videos from YouTube, Vimeo, and Animoto on your Squarespace site. Add an image overlay to your video to improve your website's load speed by waiting to embed video players until playback starts. Every design automatically includes a unique mobile presence that matches the overall style of your website, so your content will look great on every device, every time. And if you don't want that, you can always disable the mobile view from Website Manager. Buying a domain from Squarespace is so simple because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. Each domain comes with an ad-free parking page and free WHOIS privacy on eligible domains. Squarespace sells over 200 top-level domains so you can find the perfect name for your website. Choose a URL that ends in .com, .net, .org, or you can always get a more specific one like .art if you want to be fancy. If you're ready to share your passions or promote your business with the rest of the world, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.